You're listening to the Real Estate Runway podcast, powered by Quattro Capital, where we are all about alternative business and investment strategies to help you amplify life and maximize wealth. Here's your host, the recovering engineer turned multifamily investor, Chad Sutton. All right, everyone. Today, we have Mr. Rod Cleef on the episode. You're going to love this episode. We're going to talk about how he lost $50 million in the prior crash, how he had the mindset to rebuild from it, and what he's seeing today and what you should be seeing as you prepare to take advantage of the opportunities in front of us. So get ready for an action-packed episode. Before we do, folks, pay it forward, all right? The only way you can make sure to share what you've learned on this episode is to forward it to someone else, leave a comment, leave a review. That's the only way to grow the show and pay it forward to someone just like you who is getting value out of this show and who can get value out of this show, okay? Now, if you want to be on the show, I'd love to have you. Hit us up at podcast at thequattroway.com to suggest a topic or thequattroway.com slash podcast to apply. Folks, if you want to work with us, we're always investing in real estate for your real estate investing needs and wealth growth. Check us out at thequattroway.com slash invest. All these links are in the show notes for your clicking pleasure. Folks, we're on all the social medias. We have a TikTok. We have a YouTube at Real Estate Runway Podcast for both of those. Team Quattro Capital, one word, no special characters on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, you name it. We'd love to interact with you everywhere or anywhere you like to interact. All right, let's get right into this episode. Here we go. All right, all right, all right. Real Estate Runway family, welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Runway podcast. I'm joined with my friend Rod Cleef today. You may have heard of the guy. He's in a few places on the internet. If not, get out from under the rock and search. But this is your captain speaking. As usual, we're going to have a great show today talking about Rod's background and just what we're collectively seeing in the market today from a person who has been through the last recession and is can opine on where we are today. Rod, welcome to the show. Good to see you again. How's it going? It's good to see you, Chad. Let's have some fun today, brother. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. And we're doing a one-two punch here. I'll be down with you in Sarasota in about a week right. doing the same thing on your show. So let's yep. knock this out. That'll be fun. Cool, man. Well, as we always do, let's start with talking about you. Give me a little bit about your story, what you know, what you think is important for the audience, and then let's get into the meat today. Sure, sure. So let me. I'm going to take you back because it'll lend a framework to what I think we're going to talk about today. And so I'm a Dutch immigrant. I was born in the Netherlands, wooden shoes, windmills. Immigrated when I was six years old with my brother, Albert, my mother's Vancha, and we ended up in Denver, Colorado. And I will tell you that when we first got there, we really struggled. I remember eating expired food. We shopped at an expired food store. True story. They had one <laughs> and a you know, day old bread as well. And I remember drinking powdered milk with our cereal in the morning because it was cheaper than real milk. And trust me, it sounds better than it is. And I remember wearing clothes from the Goodwill and the Salvation Army all the way through junior high school until I finally got disgusted because I was tall for my age at 14 and lied and got a job flipping burgers at Burger King so I could buy my own clothes and then ultimately buy a car. And, and I'm sure you've got listeners that had it harder than I did and uh, maybe even have it harder now with uh, the economic headwinds we're facing. But I will tell you, I knew I wanted more. And luckily, my mom had an incredible work ethic. So she babysat kids. We always had a dozen or more kids in the house that she was babysitting. And with her babysitting money, she was a bit of an entrepreneur. So she invested in the stock market successfully and IPOs with no formal education and also invested in real estate. And her first real estate acquisition was the house directly across the street from us that she bought when I was about 14 for about 30 grand. And then when I was 17, she told me she'd made $20,000 in her sleep that had gone up in value 20 grand. And I'm like, what? You made 20,000, you didn't do anything? Now, this is when 20,000 was a lot of money. And I'm like, screw college, mom, I'm getting into real estate. So I went out and got my real estate license. I was actually a broker. I could actually have my own office that you could do that back then with education. Right when I turned 18, I was a broker. And now they get smart, you need some experience to be a broker. But, and I was smart enough to go work for a broker, but I lived at home and my first year in real estate, I made about $8,000. My second year, maybe $10,000. But my third year, I made over $100,000. So what happened between year two and year three that caused me to 10X my income? Well, what happened was I met a guy, I was actually dating his daughter, and he taught me about the importance of mindset and psychology and how really 80 to 90% of your success in anything is just that, your mindset and psychology. Only 10 to 20% is the real estate stuff we talk about on our podcasts here. And fast forward to today, I've owned over 2,000 houses that I've rented long-term in three states, and I now own thousands of apartment units. And in 2006, my net worth went up $17 million while I slept. And you might say, wow. And I said, wow. And I got a head so big, I could barely fit it through a freaking door. I thought I was a real estate god. 
when that happens, God of the universe will give you a nice little beat down. Well, that was 2008 and nine. I lost conservatively $50 million in 2008 and nine. And so what I'm known for talking about on my podcast and at my live events is really the mindset it took to have 50 million to lose in the first place. And then maybe more importantly, the mindset it took to recover. There were people that killed themselves in the Great Depression and even in 2008 and nine, lost less than I did. And I'm happy to drill down on it if you like a little bit, Chad. It's an amazing track record that you've and, and story you've got here, and I think that's the logical place to go. What does it look like to everyone's two thousand eight story is different, Rod? What does it look like to yeah. build up that much equity and then lose it all? How did it happen? What were the symptoms? What'd you learn from it? Let's walk through that. Story. Yeah, well, okay, you want to drill down on how it happened? I want to go how it, it happened was I had eight hundred houses and I had several apartment complexes, and it was the houses that pulled me down. So let me explain. They, they were all in Florida and they were two hours north of me and two hours south of me and everywhere in between. I live in Sarasota. And they, were across, they were along the Gulf Coast of Florida. And, and there were several things that, that impacted this. Number one, houses is, are much harder to cash flow than multifamily, okay? They just are. You have individual taxes, you have individual insurance, and they just don't cash flow near as well as an asset with multiple units. Now, additionally, taxes in Florida are proportionally higher than elsewhere in the country because we have no state income tax here. So they have to make it up elsewhere. I had properties in wind and flood zones. And so the insurance is higher. And now the insurance is crazy. But we won't we'll make you talk about that later. But that killed my cash flow. Yeah. And that killed me. But what really killed me was the maintenance. These were primarily C class houses. There's A, B, C, and D is the hood. Stay out of the hood. Ask me how I know. And, but C is not, it was a step above, but they're working class, blue collar houses, older. So they're going to have more maintenance anyway. But then, of course, it's a tougher demographic. So they definitely have more maintenance. And it was the maintenance that killed me. See, if I send someone to one of my apartment complexes, Everything's the same. We can stockpile parts, plumbing parts, electrical parts, HVAC parts, appliance parts, window locks, door locks, whatever. And you stockpile parts and they're in and out in an hour. Well, if they had to go to one of my houses and it's an hour and a half away one way, then they have to see what's wrong because every house is different. Then they got to find a Home Depot or a Lowe's because chances are they don't have everything on their truck for anything that can go wrong with the house. And that what took an hour at one of my apartment complexes took all day at one of my 800 houses. And that was huge, okay? But then the kind of the final straw was I didn't pay attention to tenant demographics back then. If they had a good job, they had good credit, and they paid a deposit, I let them live there. And what I discovered after the fact was I had a ton of contractors, plumbers, electricians, drywallers, painters, roofers living in my houses, and that work fell off a freaking cliff in 2008 9 They didn't have any work. And so that's how I crashed and burned. And what's crazy is I was only at a 30% loan to value. I only owed 30 cents on the dollar and I still crashed and burned. And what else is crazy is that my portfolio actually dropped to a point where I was upside down. It dropped 70%. At that point, I, I threw in the towel in late 2009. And so that's how it happened. But how did I, but what, what was interesting is my multifamily did just fine. Yes, it dropped. I lost about 10% of revenue, but it could have broke, it, it, it could have easily survived. Problem is that Rod in his infinite wisdom decided to save 50 basis points, half percent interest or so, and combine packages of houses with my multifamily assets. So I lost everything. And, but that's why I started my podcast seven years ago. I used to tell people, if you're going to buy and hold real estate, for God's sakes, do multifamily, don't do single family. And, and I started seven years ago and I used to tell people, I'll never sell you anything. And now I'm a liar because I do boot camps. I have coaching and everything else. I never planned to. I just wanted to add value. And you want to make God laugh, you tell them your plans. And I've got a thousand people scheduled quote. to go to Orlando in September. But that's what happened. And But if you'd like to discuss how I recovered, I'm happy to drill down on that a little bit with you as well. Well, I think that's the next logical step. And, and so just to summarize, okay. everyone's story was different, right? And so the issue was not you were highly levered. The issue was, right. as we all know, that who have been studying other types of real estate here, single family is inefficient. And so inefficiencies killed you, local environment killed you, and then mainly tenant demographic, not necessarily class of tenant, just demographic of, of really their work, where their income is coming from, sure. fell off a cliff sure. overnight. Sure. And so you lost income. And then unfortunately, then cross collateralization killed you from there. So yeah, so let's, so you've right. done this. And, and you've learned a tunnel. And I, by the way, I think that every lesson we learn is an opportunity given from God. They're opportunities to grow and change and get smarter. And, and so now the part of the story. I call them seminars. Seminars. I, I call them that. seminars. They're, they're not seminars. failures. I, I will tell you, I will, I, it's interesting. I have built 27 businesses in my lifetime so far. I, I was shocked at how many yeah. it was when I yeah. checked it a couple of years ago. 
and several worth tens of millions of dollars. Most spectacular flaming seminars, okay? But we fail our way to success. I, I will tell you, if you're listening and you're afraid of failing, fear regret, don't fear failure. We fail our way to success and it's, you never get attached to the vehicle. Your vehicle may fail or crash and burn, but you're not a failure. And that's super important that you distance yourself from whatever vehicle you're using. And on that note, I believe we're headed into a financial what storm, and I really believe everything's going on sale. Definitely, it's happening in the commercial multifamily space, really all commercial asset classes. Office is like a complete train wreck already. Six of the major metros are at about a 72% occupancy rate right now, averaged. And these assets don't break even unless you're in the 80s and early, low 90s even in some cases. And I really believe we're headed. And so in that vein, Pick your vehicle. If you're listening to this or watching this, decide how you're going to capitalize on what's coming because it's coming and there's going to be incredible opportunity, but you got to get up to speed as fast as possible. There's going to be opportunity to buy businesses, buy other asset classes of real estate. I would stay away from office, probably even stay away from retail right now, but self-storage is awesome. Mobile home parks are awesome, industrial and so on. But, but pick a vehicle and learn it right away. If it's multifamily, get your butt to my boot camp in September. I'll give your peeps a hell of a deal, by the way, for that too. We can talk about that later. But the point is, get up to speed as fast as possible so you can capitalize on what's coming. Folks, and the, the, the wisdom here is, is paramount because there, there's two things you got to remember. If you have courage and capital when no one else does, you're going to make a fortune, right? That, that's one mm -hmm. of the most important things. But the other is, you know what luck is? It's when preparation meets opportunity. Opportunity's knocking at the door. If you're not prepared, if you haven't been to Rod's stuff, if you don't know what your vehicle is and you're not ready to capitalize, you're going to miss it. And we're going to go right back to, to being overpriced real estate at some point. Yeah. And so with all that said, why don't we pivot over to the recovery and, and the mindset it took after seminars of that magnitude to recover to where you are today? Yeah, it was a big seminar. 50 million is a big seminar. I haven't met anybody that lost that much yet. If you find somebody, please send them my way so I can feel better about what happened to me. But listen, here's the thing. There are several things that I did to recover. And what's, why that's relevant right now, because these same things are relevant as we go into this tough time. Okay. You said uh, when courage meets opportunity, the opportunity is coming and it's going to be very easy to get caught up in fear and not have courage, especially if you're watching the news and all the crap they put out there. And most of it's crap. You don't even know what to believe anymore. Never forget this. The news organizations are not public service organizations. They no, are not. for profit organizations. They are censored. They are slanted and they are there to try to scare you. I remember back in 09, they were saying real estate would be terrible for 10 years. And, and the multifamily exceeded pre crash rents exceeded pre crash levels within three years, okay? Less than three years, even. And so don't, it's very important as a leader. If you're listening or watching this, you're a leader. And trust me, in what's coming, the world's going to need more leaders. And so it's very important that you pay attention to your focus as well. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. But the, the thing that I had to do was I had to reassociate Chad with what I wanted and why I wanted it. For example, if you happen to come to my boot camp in September, the first thing we do is goal setting on steroids, like an hour and a half of goal setting. Because how do you get anything if you don't know what the hell it is? You got to know what you want and why you want it. And so that's a critical piece. So that's what I did. Because what you have to do, even if you're brand new to this, is you have to create what Napoleon Hill in his book, Think and Grow Rich, calls a burning desire and hunger. You got to want it. Okay. And so that's how you push through fear. That's how you push through any limiting beliefs that you may have. That's how you get a little uncomfortable. We know the comfort zone is a nice warm place and we also know nothing freaking grows there, right? And so it starts with goals. So goals are super important. And so that's what I did initially is I reassociated and then I made a decision that I was no longer gonna be a pity party. I was no longer bemoan my what happened to me, woe is Rod. And if you're brand new in this, you also have to make a decision. And when I say make a decision, I don't mean dip your freaking toe in the water. I mean, you are all in. It's not a one foot in, one foot out. And then once you've made that decision, you're like a train on a track. And if you hesitate, you're going to get knocked off track if you're just interested. Motivation will get you started, but it's that commitment, that decision that ends up with a commitment that'll get you home. And it's super, super important. And let me give you an example of a decision. A, a, an analogy would be if you're going to attack the island in battle, you burn your ships because you're taking their damn ships home. That's a freaking decision, okay? That's what I mean. Then after that, I just, I had to get up and make things happen. I had to take that first step in my recovery. And again, for those of you that haven't, you know, got, you know, haven't decided to do a side hustle like this or pick a vehicle to do a side hustle, you got to take that first step. And Dr. Martin Luther King said, you don't have to see the whole staircase. You take that first step in faith and the next step will be revealed. 
Lao Tzu, thousands of years ago, said the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, but you got to take that step. And sometimes that could be the biggest step of your life. And I know that like me, you have probably a lot of analytical listeners and followers. And listen, I love you and you know who you are and you know how you are that you have to check off every single freaking box before you make a move. I'm going to tell you, don't do that. Okay. Sometimes you just have to operate with faith and recognize that a great analogy for this would be you can drive all the way across the United States at night with your headlight only seeing 60, 70 feet in front of you. You'll make it. You may have obstacles, but you know other people have done it before you. And if, if this is you and, and, and you're analytical, remember that and remember that you take that first step, the next step will be revealed. And remember this, if you're afraid of failure, and a, and a lot, I know a lot of people are, myself included, but fear, regret much more, okay? There's this nurse in Australia named Bronnie Ware. So she was a hospice nurse. So she took care of patients when they were about to die. And she asked him a question, Chad. And the question was, do you have any regrets? And she even wrote a book about it, something like The Five Regrets of Dying. You know what the number one regret was? It was not living the life I could have lived, living someone else's life, not doing what I know I'm capable of. I can't think of anything worse than that. So again, don't get caught up in, uh, in fear and expecting. In fact, let's talk about fear for a second. So what is fear? False evidence appearing real or F everything and run. You know, I like to think it's face everything and rise. And again, in what's coming, Fear is going to be prevalent, especially if you're locked into the news and don't get me started on the politics. And so it's super important that you remember that the most sex successful people on the planet have fear. They just push through in spite of it. OK, and the ones that aren't successful are the ones that let them let it stop them. The other thing is limiting beliefs. And let me share something with you. I'll show you. I've actually got the prop right here. So I'll share some limiting beliefs that I had. Give me one second. So. When I immigrated this country, I got thrown into school. I found out what bullies were for the first time. So I got my butt kicked occasionally. And then my mom, proud Dutch woman, is she just thought it'd be a great idea to send me to school in these wooden shoes. These are the actual freaking shoes. We found them in my old house. And these leather shorts the Germans wear for Oktoberfest. So I got my ass kicked again. And then my mom, there were bullies that lived on the end of our street and she chased them off with a fly swatter. So the next day I got my butt kicked and I came up with this belief system that I wasn't good enough. I used to ask myself, how can I show them I'm good enough? And a lot of people have these negative belief systems. Here's what you need to remember. There's a reason the acronym for belief systems is BS, because 99% of them are BS, but we believe they're real. I'm not good enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not young enough, old enough. I don't have enough money, enough time. They have no basis in fact. So what you got to do, if, you, if you're consciously aware of one of these belief systems, is drag it out into the daylight. Look at it with your adult rational mind. Recognize that it's BS and it'll go away. I used to be afraid to raise my hand in class. And now I speak in front of literally thousands of people a year in flip-flops and very often in shorts. And it just it doesn't matter anymore. This episode is brought to you by Agora's Investment Management Solution. Are you a GP or syndicator still using spreadsheets or an outdated investment management platform? Advance to Agora, the next step in investment management evolution. Agora's customers raise capital 40% faster and reduce operational expenses by 25%. With Agora, you can collect commitments faster, raise more capital by creating beautifully designed data rooms, public brochures, and automated subscription flows. Manage all your investor relationships efficiently with the most advanced investor CRM on the market. Delight your investors with a beautifully designed investor portal, which is fully customized to fit your brand and integrate seamlessly into your website. Distribute payments in a click directly from the platform and automatically generate and send all the reports and statements your investors need. Agora is suited for all types and all sizes of GPs or syndicators starting with an affordable $5.99 a month subscription plan. Click the link in the description to book a live demo and learn what Agora can do for your business. Agora, better investment management. So I got two more topics, if you'll humor me here, Chad. I know I've been rambling for a bit here. Can I Let's keep going, Rob. Right? Let's keep going. All right, all right, so the next thing is focus. The most successful people on the planet have the highest degree of focus, okay? Where focus goes, energy flows. Now, here's the thing, though. Whatever you focus on gets larger, both positive or negative, okay? And that's why staying away from the freaking news and not getting sucked into them is super important. I get people that say, I need to get out of student loan debt. And I say, wrong statement. You need to make so much freaking money that debt's irrelevant. They asked Mother Teresa if she was anti-war. She said, no, I'm pro-peace, okay? 
That's what I'm talking about here. And I don't know about you, but I'll be sitting watching Netflix and I'll be scrolling through freaking social media, which kills your focus, okay? And I, I, I get excited. My podcast has had or about a little over 17 million downloads. And I listen to two podcasts. And the reason I bring these that brought up mine is they these both of these get that a week, okay? One of them is Tim Ferriss and the other one is Joe Rogan, okay? I try to stay on both sides of the aisle. I try to get some some balance, okay? And I'm definitely on one side, I can tell you, but I try to get some balance. On Tim Ferriss's show, he interviews the best of the best in the world, like the best actors, Jamie Foxx, Ed Norton, Hugh Jackman, Arnold, billionaires like Ray Dalio, CEOs of the biggest companies in the world, Zuckerberg, NFL athletes, Michael Phelps, the best of the best. And he deconstructs their, consent, their success. And I started to hear a pattern, Chad. They almost all meditate. What does meditation enhance? Focus, right? So focus is huge. And then there's the next thing is playing to your strengths. If you're going to do this multifamily business, for example, there are a lot of different hats you can wear. It's a team sport, but you should be playing to your strengths. If you're analytical, do the underwriting, find the deals. If you're the mouthpiece like Chad and I, go out there and build relationships and do invest, investor relations, brokers, so on and so forth. Play to your strengths. Don't try to maximize your weaknesses because your strengths are your greatest assets. You're going to get success. You know, what you do is you align, you hire, or you partner for your weaknesses. But when you love what you do, success is inevitable. Some of the best partnerships that I've interviewed on my show have been an analytical person with an outgoing person. Those are matches made in heaven for finding deals and doing multifamily. And super important. And if you're playing to your strengths, you never work another day in your life and you love what you do and you're going to be passionate about it. And that's the next piece. To influence anybody, you need passion. Okay, and when you love what you do, you're passionate. So it comes effortlessly. And so the last thing I want to talk about uh, is peer group. You show me your three best friends, I'll show you who you are in every aspect of your life, your health, your happiness, and definitely your finances. And uh, a lot of people default to peers that they went to school with or that they work with. And I remember when I was losing everything in 2008, and nine, I was actually in Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership, which is about 130 grand back then. It's more than that now. And I was around people that were killing it in that crash. They were thriving. And they're like, get up, you puss, 50 million schmillion, go make it happen. That's who you want to be around when the stuff hits the fan, right? So be very careful. Again, you're a leader if you're watching this. Make sure you're in an empowering group that supports you. I've got coaching students. They're called my warriors. And I'm going to brag for a minute. I've got about 1,200. They now own somewhere between 170 and 180,000 units, okay? And I've only been teaching five years. I'm super proud of that. But the reason I bring that up is it's, it's such an incredible environment for people to grow in. They're validating each other and praising each other and lifting each other up. So that's what you need to do as well. Get into a group of people that will support you, not ones that are out of their own fear or limiting beliefs are going to hold you back. And sometimes that's family. So be very careful who you allow to influence you. If, if it's love your family, but proactively choose your peers, that's super, super important. Folks, what I hope you just heard here was Rod really getting on a hell of a soapbox about mindset making all the difference. And if you don't like your circumstances, change them. You are the sum, I, I'd go even further. You're the sum average of the five people you spend the most time with, whether you like it or not. And I love the way you said that, your fitness, your faith, your all the things, finances, it's all an average of who you're around. And so get in the right group. And so I love that you, you really set that stage because talking to anyone, folks, if you lost $50 million or even $5 million, you're going to be in a world of hurt, a world of pain, a world of suffering, and it takes mindset to get out of it. And so let's say we followed this path. And so Rod, before we get into a little segment on what are you seeing today and the similarities and differences and how are you reacting, tell me real quick. So you you had the right mindset with the people you're around, right? Now, how did you build back differently? And how are you? I would assume that you're ready for the well, next. Well, obviously, I'm not making the same mistakes I made. I can tell you the last two assets I bought over 500 doors between the two of them. I literally looked where every single person worked. OK, and I'm not buying any C-class assets right now. And and not because of any other reason than that demographic is getting their butts handed to them with inflation and the cost of things. I went to the grocery store the other day and I usually don't have to do that. And I'm like, $150? Are you freaking kidding me? And I asked the clerk even, I said, I, how do people afford this? And she just shook her head with gas and inflation. And so I, I focus on, on, on A and B assets. Um, 
and I will do a C asset if it's in a B area and I can bring it up. But other than that, I'm being I'm doing kind of a flight to quality because I'm worried about that. That's a part answer to your question. But, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, Chad. And I learned a lot of lessons, a lot of very valuable lessons in all of that. And I'm incredibly conservative. I've only bought two assets in the last year and a half, even 296 unit asset in San Antonio and 145 in Nashville, screaming deals, 50, 50 deals with my partners. Cause they were so good. I can do them 50, 50 instead of 70, 30 or 80, 20. And, and I'm starting to see deals come again. They're coming. I've, got, I've had more communication for brokers in the last six months than I've had in the last six years. It's like crazy. They're coming out of the woodwork. And again, we are going to see some headwinds and some pain. I, I talked about office. There's an article in Forbes here about the six t- biggest demogra- big, biggest cities and what the occupancy is in office. It's insane. And a lot of deals are going back to the lenders already. There's $1.6 trillion of commercial debt coming due by the end of next year. Most of that debt, uh, a third of that debt is held by small and regional banks. You're going to see bank failures. I promise you they're coming. I'm, again, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to I'm trying to tell you there is opportunity coming. So don't look at it through that negative filter. Look at it through the positive filter. I know that's hard to do, but that's super important. But there are a lot of headwinds. Here's an article in Forbes a couple of months ago. Expect layoffs at 51 percent of the U.S. companies, according to new survey. Here's another article that was in the Economy magazine. More than 20. This is this has been about six months. More than 20 million U.S. households are behind on utility bills. 20 million U.S. households behind on utility bills. Another one is people are using credit cards to pay everyday expenses. What's wrong with that picture, right? And listen, again, I'm not trying to scare you, but there is a reckoning coming. I don't believe it can be. They can, I suppose they can kick the can down the curb. I was going to say, I don't think they can. They can if they print another couple trillion dollars. But then what's that going to do to inflation again, right? We'll be having you the know, same conversation two years from now, right? When we have to right. go the other way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Listen, I'm not trying to scare you. And when I tell you get up to speed fast, get up to speed fast, because I I saw it last time. If I hadn't been hiding under a rock from getting my butt kicked, I'd be on the back of a yacht right now because the opportunities were fantastic in 9, 10, 11 and 12. And and again, I was licking my wounds. It was shame on me, but I won't make that mistake this time. I got crushed by that wave. I'm surfing this wave. Okay, so let me tell you, I, I, I really believe incredible opportunities coming. And if you're prepared, if you're up to speed, if you've built relationships and you understand whatever vehicle you're going to use, you'll be able to cap. I think there's going to be great opportunity to buy businesses. There's 80 million baby boomers in this country, and many of them are retiring. They've got businesses as well. I mean, I'm going to focus on multifamily. I get my butt handed to me anytime I change lanes now. I you know get a dilution of focus, so I'm very focused now. But anyway, that's my two cents on that. I really believe that the headwinds are coming and with that is going to come incredible opportunity. I, I, here's a quote from Elon Musk. Everyone's lying. A bigger crash is coming. That's a direct quote. And he's a pretty smart freaking guy. And uh, Trump, love him or hate him, uh, says the warns the U.S. economy could reach levels of the Great Depression. These are quotes. OK, again, who knows if it's going to be that bad. But if you're passively investing with the right operators that are super conservative, this business is a numbers game. If they're raising operating reserves and they're conservative and they're not being aggressive in their rent pro formas. I saw a pro forma the other day where they were performing 8% rent growth. No, uh, it was, I saw one that was 10% for the next five years. I couldn't believe seeing that. But, you know, we're at zero this year and 3% every year thereafter, organic rent growth, which is incredibly low compared to the fact that markets like Tampa near where I live had 30% rent growth a year or two ago. But you know, that's what it's going to take. It's going to take conservative underwriting. It's going to take additional capital in reserves. And if you find operators that operate like that, that have gone full cycle on a lot of deals, they're going to be just fine. The other thing that's killing people is that so many operators did bridge debt these last couple of years. And uh, do your uh, listeners, for the most part, know what that is? Do you talk about that? We talk a lot about the capital stack on this show. So I I would imagine. Okay. All right. Good. Well, (laughs) yeah, those guys are getting killed. I, I have a an attorney, a big attorney, SEC attorney in Dallas. And he, he says 45% of his business right now is forbearances, capital calls, and, and dealing with potential foreclosures. That's 45% of his business. There are a lot of operators. So when the water goes out, you know who's naked. There are a lot of operators that haven't been through a crash, that didn't raise enough operating reserves, that, that have to deal with short-term debt that's come and due, and they either have to sell or refinance. Well, sales are down 75% first quarter of this year. Refinance, they have to get the debt service coverage ratio. They've got to put money into the deal to satisfy that. And then there's rate caps. 
rate caps are insane. In 2020, you could get a $100 million rate cap three years for uh, 3%. 3% three years, $100 million, $23,000. That $100 million, this is about three or four months ago when I checked this, that $100 million for one year, forget three years, for one year, 3% was $2.3 million. These operators have to raise the, the enough to lower, get the debt service where it needs to be and the rate cap. And so, again, opportunity. Don't be afraid of this. Just there's going to be opportunity. I think exponential opportunity. So, Yeah. But I guess for those out there listening who may be in some of those situations, what do you have to say yeah. to them, Rod? How do you see be people? Be proactive. Yeah, be proactive. I came to the IMN conference where I met you to look for rescue capital if any of my students needed it. And I found about four or five people there that offered it. And of course, that is the last resort because they take your a lot of your ownership, if not all your ownership. But if that means your, your investors are whole and you're whole and you don't have a ding on your with Fannie or Freddie or well, it wouldn't be Fannie or Freddie in that case, it, just a ding on your reputation then it's worth it. But that's the main reason I went to IMN, candidly, Chad, was to look for that. And, and I found it. And I would just tell you, be proactive. Don't wait. Massive action to try to figure out every possible solution. If you DM me, by the way, let me say this. If you're interested, can I mention my boot camp real quick? Because there's a reason I want to bring it up. So if uh, I've got a three-day boot camp coming up in September, it's not a big sales pitch. I talk about my coaching for about 30 minutes. If you use the code CHAD, you can come for $197, okay? It's twice that now. It'll be three times that by the time it gets closer. But $197, bucks, not a sales pitch, three days of training. Even if you're just going to invest passively, you should be there. Why would you give your hard-earned money to someone without having a basic understanding of what it is? So if you're interested, go to rodslinks.com and rods, plural, links, plural, dot com, and use the code CHAD on the, in the bootcamp site. That's my link tree. My podcast is there. ton of free resources, a ton of fantastic free books. I've got, I think, a best-in-class asset management book, best-in-class how to hire a third-party property management book, how to questions to ask before you get in a partnership, a due diligence checklist, all that. It's all free there, okay? So Rod's Links, if you're driving, text the word LINKS to 72345, and you can go there. Now, the reason I bring that up is if you are struggling and you need some rescue capital options, DM me. My social links are there, Facebook and Instagram. DM me. I, if you have a question as well, I answer every question. People are like, is this really you? And I send a picture like this. Yeah, it's me. But I answer every question. But if you need those resources, let me know and I'll get them to you. And, I can, and I've got an incredible attorney that's helping a lot of people that I know, not students, thank God. I don't have very many students in trouble, one or two. That's good. But I've got an incredible attorney, and I'm happy to ref, uh, refer him, you to him as well. Just DM me, and I'll help you. That's the, reason, the main reason I wanted to bring that up. Yeah, y'all, so much value here. And folks, if you got that link on the road or you got the number, do that. Otherwise, just scroll down to your show notes. It'll all be right there for your clicking pleasure. No worries on that. Rod, we could talk all day, brother, but I know you're, you, you have a busy schedule right after this, another interview coming up. So let's get to a couple of questions just to get to know you on a more personal level, and then I'll see you next week in Sarasota. How's that sound? Okay, sounds good, brother. All right, man. So first question, we have four of these we like to ask. What is your superpower? It could be life or business, and how does Communication. it serve you well? Communication. Communication, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm an avid reader. I literally have thousands of books downstairs in this building you'll see when you come over, and that is anybody that reads a lot, has a, an extensive vocabulary. And so it's definitely communication. Yeah, I love that. Now, we may have talked through some of this, but let's flip the coin over. What's your biggest failure, life or business, and what'd you learn from it? Well, I think 50 million is a pretty, pretty big step in the right, right direction. My first marriage didn't make it, and it was all about selection. It took me 12 years to realize it. I'm, I'll take as much blame. I'll definitely take my share of the blame and the fact that it didn't work. But if it had worked, I wouldn't have the most beautiful woman on the planet as my wife now. And she is freaking supermodel beautiful. You go follow me on Rod's links, go to one of my social, you'll see I'm not lying. And she's more beautiful on the inside than the outside. In fact, that's how I rationalize what happened to me because I never would have met her if it hadn't happened. Life is about meaning and you decide what meaning you place on something. So the meaning I place on losing 50 million is I got to have Tiffy and, and, I, and I'd give it all up again for her. Yeah, that's incredible, Rod. Here at Quattro, one of our four pillars is philanthropy. You're a self-proclaimed philanthropist as well. I love giving guests opportunities to share that philanthropic heart. And we've actually had some right, uh, let me talk about that, that, you know, so let's go. Yeah, let me talk about that. So, so I'll give it a little story, but it'll add value for sure. You know, when I moved to Denver, I always knew I always wanted to live on the beach. Okay, there's no beach in Denver. It's the middle of the country. So I would visualize the sand and the palm trees and the surf and, and of course, bikinis. I'm a guy. 
But 20 years later, I built this incredible $8 million, 10,000 square foot mansion on the beach. Okay. I owned the beach on one side and had my boats on the backside. It was called a Gulf to Bay. It was like a slice through an island, which was unthinkable when I was 18. So again, by the way, I forgot to mention this. If you go to Rod's links and you don't want to come to my boot camp, I do a goal setting workshop every New Year's Day and it's down there on that link tree. It's my workshop. It takes about an hour. There's a guide you can download. People spend more time planning a freaking birthday party than they do designing their lives. That's designing your life. So if for nothing else, go there and do your goals. Have your spouse do your goals. Kids are over 10 years old. Have them do it. Okay. It's with music. It's here in my studio. It's, I'm really proud of him. So again, Rod's links at the bottom is the goal setting. But anyway, so I got this amazing goal. And just to describe this house, it had a waterfall from the second floor balcony into the pool. You had to walk through the waterfall to get to the pool. Pools and magazines, big spiral staircase up through the middle of the house. I had the, the elevator and the wine cellar. And, and on the second floor, I had aquariums built around the pool that cost me almost $200,000. So this gives you an idea of the house. So two months after I moved in, 20 years I worked for this thing. Two months after I moved in, I'm floating in the pool at night and I'm looking up at this testament to my ego, which is really what it was to prove the world I was good enough. And I got depressed. And I don't mean a little depressed. I got really depressed. I'm like, what the hell? I've just achieved success like times 10,000. I had the Maserati and two Mercedes and the boats and the jet skis and all the stupid crap I thought was important. And when I look back on it, there were several things happening, Chad. Number one is you should never achieve a big goal without having other goals lined up behind it. Like the good book says, without a vision, the people perish. You need a vision for the future. So that was number one. Number two, is it's never about the goals. You need the goals to create that burning desire so that you get your ass up and go make it happen. So you grind a few years like most people won't. So you can live the rest of your life like most people can't. But it's never about the goals. It's about who you become on your path to the goals. But the big thing was I was totally focused on Rod. Show the world I'm good enough. Show the world I matter. And that's the year I went and saw Tony Robbins for the first time. This is 23 years ago. And I saw that he fed families for the holidays. And I'm like, what a concept. Do something for someone else. I'm embarrassed to say I had to be 40 to get that memo. So I called my brother who lived in Denver. I said, bro, let's feed five families because I was going to go visit him for Thanksgiving. He called his church, found five families that really needed help. And we bought turkeys and toys and food. And the third family changed my life. There's this woman with five kids and she was in a one bedroom. And she gets, comes out, she's a Hispanic woman. She starts crying when she sees all this stuff on the porch. Her kids come out, two of the older ones start crying. I start crying and I'm hooked. And I'm blessed to say in the last 23 years, we fed somewhere between 130 and 140,000 children here in Sarasota and Bradenton, Florida. We've done tens of thousands of backpacks filled with school supplies, local kids. In fact, August 4th, we're doing 1,800 backpacks. And again, we've done tens of thousands of teddy bears to local police departments for officers to keep in their vehicles if they encounter a child that's been traumatized. Now, this is not me bragging. There's a big message here. We've been taught that we have to achieve to be happy. That's a U.S. thing where you can't be happy until you've achieved. But I'm gonna tell you, if you give back in any fashion, you're happily achieving. And I know it's a play on words, but Tony Robbins calls it the science of achievement versus the art of fulfillment. Achievement's a science. You want to learn multifamily, get your butt to my boot camp. I'll give you the map and the blueprint. You just have to go do it, okay? But fulfillment is an art. You got to figure out what juices you. For me, it's kids. Maybe for you, it's animals or the environment or the elderly and give back right now. Now you might be saying, yeah, well, you had money to give back. No, you want more money, give back. That's how the world works. You wanna be wealthier, more successful, faster, give back right now. So there's my philanthropic talk. I'd, I'd say that's probably the biggest answer I've ever gotten to that question, Rod. And you're totally right, man. If, you're, if you don't give generously with what you have now, you won't do it when you have a ton. So just keep that in mind, yeah. folks. Rod, incredible episode. I'm going to keep us on time here. Thank you for your time. And uh, you're welcome on the show anytime. Folks, check the links in the show notes. They'll be right there for your clicking pleasure. I'll see you in Sarasota next week, brother. Thanks, brother. Want to generate higher return and drive alpha for your commercial real estate firm? Now you can with Lobby CRE by 30 Capital. Lobby CRE is an asset management platform designed to manage and optimize cash flow for faster returns and more visibility into performance. Shift your strategy with the market, not because of it. Identify opportunities and mitigate risk now rather than later and save more than eight hours per week through automation. Click the link in the show notes to learn more and book a demo. Well, folks, I hope you got as much as I did out of that episode. Rod is a fantastic individual to listen to. Good stuff. We learned a lot about the mindset that it takes to be successful in business, how to surround yourself with the right people, and look, how to get out of the woe is me attitude when things don't go your way. Surrounding yourself with the right audience, the right people 
who are going to be there for you, but also push you when times are tough rather than tell you to fold and go back to work. All right. So great episode today. If you liked what you heard, pay it forward. Leave us that comment, that five-star review. Subscribe to us on YouTube, wherever you're listening to this thing. Engage. That's the only way for us to share this with more people. Hit that little share button. Send this episode to someone you would love who could use this information. We appreciate you for that, and they will appreciate you for that as well. Pay it forward, folks. If you want to be on the episode, check us out at thequattroway.com slash podcast. Love having these conversations. We have everyone on from the first-time investor to the Rod Cleefs of the world, as you saw. So come on, check it out. It'll be good for you. And look, we're on all the Insta- on the social medias, rather. Team Quattro Capital, one word, no special characters, at Real Estate Runway Podcast on TikTok and Instagram. If you'd like to be on there as well, we'll love to engage with you wherever you want to engage. And folks, if you want to look at working with us, you can reach out at thequattroway.com slash invest. We'd love to have a conversation with you and see if we can help you in any way. This has been another episode of the Real Estate Runway podcast. Until next time, over and out, folks. We hope this episode was insightful and brought value to your day. If so, please be awesome and leave us a five-star review. Find out how Team Quattro can help you at thequattroway.com. Until next time, this is the Real Estate Runway podcast.